The biggest adversity I have faced on the spiritual path, my own ego for sure. The outer world is just the outer world. A rainy day, a sunny day, a mountain, a river, a flower. They just are. How I respond to them is what creates problems in my life. In the same way, people who love me are just people who love me. People who don't love me are just people who don't love me. People who are nice to me are just people who, in that moment, are able from the toolbox that they've got to find the nice tool, to recognize it, to pull it out at that moment, and to use it. People who are not nice to me are people who open their toolbox and cannot locate the nice tool. And in its place, they pull out the bullying tool or the competitive tool or the angry tool or the critic tool. And they use that instead. But that's, that's all they are. And it's my reaction to them, like my reaction to the rainy day or the sunny day or the mountain or the river that creates the problems in my life. So on a spiritual path, the highest goal, I mean, if, you would, if, if, if I were in business, aiming to be CEO or I had become CEO and you said, what was your greatest adversity? Well, obviously, I'd give you adversity that was on my path to becoming CEO. But on a spiritual path, the goal is to connect with spirit, to focus on spirit. That's all it's about, to live as spirit, not to live in the illusion of myself as this body, not to live in the illusion of other people as their body. So not to judge myself based on what the body looks like, what color it is, what gender it is, how much money it's got in a bank account, what degrees it's got sitting in a filing cabinet somewhere, what's happened to it that shouldn't have happened, what didn't happen to it that should have happened. That's all just identification with the body. Similarly with my emotions, it's also body. My whole brain, all of the neurons with their electrical and chemical patterns that we call anger or call sadness or call depression, it's all part of the physical body. If you removed my brain, miraculously, my depression would disappear. I mean, it feels core to who I am. But it actually exists in a neural pathway and chemicals and electricity in my brain. Who I am is spirit. So the goal of spirituality is to live as spirit. Not as a separate spirit, of course, but as part of the divine, supreme, God, infinite, whatever word we use. And to connect with others like that. But it's the ego that gets in the way. The ego is the one that wants people to be nice to me. And that when you're not, that then gets hurt inside. Well, if I'm hurt inside, I'm no longer connected as spirit. Because the spirit doesn't get hurt, the ego gets hurt. The ego is the one with the expectation. I mean, nobody expects the Pope to call them up. Nobody expects the Queen of England to call them up. I mean, you don't, you don't wake up in the morning depressed again because the Pope hasn't called. Well, this is, this is important because we'd all be pretty excited and happy should he decide to call or, you know, should the Queen of England decide to call or should somebody like that decide to pick up the phone and call us, it would be pretty exciting. 
but we have no expectation of it happening. And since we have no expectation, the lack of it happening does not depress us, despite how nice it would be for it to happen. We also don't expect to win the lottery. Very few people move through the world depressed that they haven't won the lottery yet. If you do, fantastic. But we don't have an expectation. The depression in our life, the problems in our life, come from that which I expect to happen. I don't expect to win Miss Universe. I don't expect to win the Nobel Prize. I don't expect the Pope to call me up. So there's no depression associated with that not happening. But when I expect that people should act in a certain way, that people should treat me in a certain way, that the world should be in a certain way, that's when I get depressed. That's what hurts me. But that's what the ego does. The ego gives us a frame for how things should be. This is, this is right, this is not right. And that's, that's the greatest challenge because every moment that I'm attached to something of this body, to what it looks like, to what happens to it, it's a moment I'm not living as spirit. And every moment that I see others as bodies, so judging people as bodies, judging them based on the color of their skin, judging them based on their culture, by their gender, by their attractiveness, by their career, I'm not living as spirit. And... I'm not creating the space for them to live as spirit because something really beautiful happens when you commit to a spiritual practice is it's not only you, you actually open the door. You can't push anybody through it, unfortunately, but you open the door for others to also live as spirit. Because if I'm interacting with you as body to body, so as we talk, I'm checking you out, or I'm looking at your bag, or your, you know, your, your shawl, or whatever it is. Well, I'm seeing you as an object. You feel it. But if I'm connecting with you spirit to spirit, then I'm inviting you in that moment to respond to me from a place of spirit. Which is a beautiful invitation to give people. They're not all going to take you up on it. Many of them will not. So no expectation that anybody's going to walk through any door you've opened. But that's... That's the greatest challenge, is our own attachment to how things should be. And you have to let it go because we have no idea how things should be. None. We have a lot of attachment to how we think they should be. But we actually don't know. And since we don't know, those expectations are in vain.